Welcome to episode 173, The Bull, on our Wise Guy series that continues as we approach the end of the month. Remember, we started this, I believe, in the end of no October, November, and December, all Wise Guy um, podcast or episodes. As a result, now we're going to cool our jets a little bit, and we, as we uh, turn into 2021 and come up with some other ideas. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the bull, Sammy the Bull Gravano, and um, he's gone from associate, made member, capo, consigliere, underboss, rat, pill pusher, and now YouTube sensation. And we'll talk about him. Interesting individual. The election, it continues and continues and continues. Of course, uh, last podcast, we talked about the Insurrection Act, but President Trump has dispelled that rumor and put it to the waste can. That is not happening. False information out there. So we have to always... Be mindful of the three-day rule, the Bon Jovi, Bongino, sorry, Bongino rule, which is three days. Here's something, wait three days till the smoke clears. And we want to wish everybody in this opportunity before we start the show a very, very Merry Christmas. As we, you know, it's cliche, people always say, it's not uh, Santa Claus that we should be thinking about, but that of the arrival of Christ Jesus. And now it's time for the Word of the Week. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Colossians 3.13 and that is part of the test everything 1521 section that you can see in our website RaiderCopNation.com and there you can look up the tab test everything and it'll take you to the word of the week we also are making some changes on the website as well we have the Hardys, Hardys like in heart, Pirate Talk. So that's our partner list. And we're partnering with some good people that love America. And we're, we're slowly creating that. So we'll reveal more as the time goes on. But now it's time to get the little circus bus because we are going to start episode 173 part of the Wise Guy series, The Bull, Sammy Gravano. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the main event. Born Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano, March 2nd, 1945. He was raised in the area of Bensonhorst, Brooklyn. His parents, Giorlornando, Jerry, and Katarina K. Gravano immigrated from Sicily. The youngest of three children having two older sisters as a young boy a relative once said as Sammy was growing up look he looks like Uncle Sammy even though his first name is Salvatore there's where he gets the nickname Sammy as he becomes older at the age of 13, he would join the street gang called the Ramblers in the area of Brooklyn. 
Once, as a young lad, Sammy went to retrieve his bicycle that was stolen by two other kids, a little bit bigger than he was. Sammy wanted his bike back. They weren't going to give it to him, and the rumble started. He fought hard, and and he fought vigorously, and one of the spectators watching this fight of a bunch of kids was a made member. And he said, look at him, look at him. He fights like a bull. And that was the second name that would stick on Sammy. Sammy would be diagnosed during his school days with dyslexia, not having the ability to learn like other kids. 1964, Sammy would be drafted in the United States Army and he would serve honorably up to the rank of corporal. In 1971, Sammy would get married and have two daughters. By 1970, Sammy would become associated with the Colombo family and an individual by the name of Shorty Sparrow would bring him into the fold. You see, Shorty approached him out in the street and said, Sammy, I've been keeping an eye on you. I've been watching you. You, you you're good with your hands and you take care of business. I like what I see, but you can't stay out there for very long by yourself. Why don't you come in with me and you'll be respected. And Sammy took him up on the offer. Being associated to Sherry Shorty Sparrow brought Sammy under the umbrella of the Colombo crime family and also Carmine Persico, which was the capo in charge of that crew. Sammy was up and coming. Now, because of a problem that would happen years later with Ralph Sparrow, Shorty's brother, Tan, uh, Sammy would end up getting transferred in the Gambino family. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to other motives of that transfer. Some people said they transferred him because there was jealousy, and that was probably partly true. But it all stemmed from an associate that was uh, in the crew. He had died, and his uh, wife was a week later hanging out with some guy. And they walk into a bar, and Sammy really can't recognize who it is. Neither can the other wise guys hanging around the bar. But they keep on looking that she's got an eye out on Sammy. So they're, they're jigging at him and they're saying, hey, you know, she's got the, the eye for you. And after a while, the guy that was with that young lady gets up to go to the bathroom. And at that point, the young lady gets up from the table and heads towards Sammy. And he goes, well, this is getting a little bit more serious. As she got closer, he recognized her as the wife of a former associate that had died. And at that point, she goes, Sammy told her, what the hell are you, crazy? Who is that guy? And she says, yeah, Sammy, life goes on. The bottom line is he threw her out of the club, told the fool to get out too. And things got twisted and twisted fast. And Ralph Sparrow twisted it even more by saying that Sammy was trying to pick her up. But there were witnesses, and some of the witnesses that were there were made men. And it got a little hairy. Sammy lost his cool, went out looking for Ralph, and as a result, he was armed. People knew he was going to do some serious damage. He got to the attention of Shorty Sparrow, which was the capo at that time now. And this is not good. As a result, uh, they called Sammy in. Now, one of the guys from the Gambino family, old man Rizzo, is the one that tells Sammy, Sammy, they're going to call you in 
on what happened at the restaurant. He already got tipped off and he knew it. He goes, you want me to go with you? And Sammy goes, well, you, 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 I mean, why are you going to go with me? It's, I got to go. You, you're you not even from that, from the Colombo family. He goes, well, I'm going to go with you anyway. So when he got there and he saw Shirley Sparrow, uh, old man Rizzo, they saluted each other as made men. And he told them, I know why you called Sammy in, but... I'm a witness. And Shorty, of course, with all respect, said, you know, thanks for stepping up, but this has nothing to do with you. It's, you know, an inter-family issue. And he said, yeah, but don't you want to hear me out? And look, I got a couple more guys, one from the Lucchese family, one from the Genovese family that were there too, that were witnesses. Oh man, Rizzo would go on to tell Shorty Sparrow the innocence of Sammy. That got back to the ears of those that needed to hear, like Karma and Persico. And Alphonse Persico, Carmine's brother, would handle the situation. There was a transfer in the works. And that transfer would lead Sammy out of the Colombo family. As Alphonse Persico told him, you can't stay with the Colombos because there might be a beef. So we're transferring you with no holes barred to the Gambino family. You belong to them now. And Sammy would go under the tutelage of... Gambino, Campo, Toto, Agrillo. And he would show him the ropes of a whole new Costa Nostra. You see, up until now, Sammy had been with the Columbos, beat him up, take him, take his money, whack this guy. But now he's going to learn the sophisticated side to Costa Nostra with the Gambinos and his new mentor, Toto. Sammy would learn quickly a lot of skills under this new family, and he quickly learned that this wasn't about what he was doing over at the Colombo family, uh, more hands-on, get a gun, hijack and robberies and all that. These guys were more sophisticated and they were controlling unions and construction and things like that. And Sammy was eating it all up as he was moving on up the totem pole. Sammy, of course, would get into rackets, uh, loan sharking, construction, and unions, control them. And this would start becoming a huge earner for Sammy and for the family as well. There are many made men, as we talked about before, and you usually have those that make money, but they're not tough guys. Those that are tough guys, but they really don't make money, or those that are just anchors. They just, uh, they're at high C, and somebody dropped an anchor, and they produce absolutely nothing. But Sammy was both a unique feature. He was an earner, and... He was also a tough guy. And you don't really see that trait, but Sammy had that trait. His relationship in the Gambino family would be extended as a new mentor in Frankie DeCiso. And Frankie was a gangster. A gangster in Brooklyn. Came from a long line of gangsters in the family. And he would bring Sammy in under his wing now to teach Sammy more the gangsterism part of the Gambino family. And the two, their relationship would grow immensely as well. Eventually, Sammy would be a part of the plot to kill Paul Castellano. John Gotti was about to make his move like we talked about in our last Wise Guys series. And it was kill or be killed 
Gotti being a gangster, he knew he had to act. Paul being a lack of a gangster because he thought he was more of a businessman would delay and hesitate, which ultimately cost his death. But Gotti needed a crew to extend and he needed to reach out. And the only other crew that really could probably do damage to Gotti's operation was Frank DeCiso and Sammy Gravano. As a result, he spoke to both of them. He spoke to Sammy first. Sammy wisely heard Gotti out and said, I'm not sure if I'm in on this right now. I got to think about it. John said, how long you, I got to wait for you to come up with an answer? He goes, well, I'm just going to get in my car and drive down in a club and go see Frank. Frank DeCiso. They spoke about it. And DeCiso said, this might be a good move. Because you see, the rank and file of the Gambino family was completely fed up with Paul. Paul was greedy. Paul was not a gangster. Paul thought he was the CEO of a company. Paul was all about Paul. And a lot of people were still bitter that he became boss and Dela Croce was passed over when he should have been boss. And now they were all stuck with Gotti and this proposition. The CISO said yes. Gravano wasn't really feeling it, but he said, all right, Frankie, I'll go with you on this one. And Frankie said, listen, if it doesn't work out, we'll whack him out. And I'll be boss and you'll be the other boss. So they had their plan worked out too. But it never came to what Frankie had said. The plot went out and they were ready to kill Paul Castellano, the boss, on December 16th, 1985. Of course, that was successful. And Sammy now is ready to be a part of the administration. He would assume the position of, as he was a capo, Frank DeCiso would immediately jump into the underboss position. Gotti would assume the boss position. A couple of months later, all that would be finalized by a meeting of all capos in the Gambino family that elected John Boss, Frankie the CISO underboss and Joanne Gallo was the consigliere he stayed like that shortly after Vincent the Chin and the commission were not happy that Paul Castellano was taken out without permission from the commission therefore they had to take somebody out they gave that contract to the um, Lu Lucchese family and gas pipe was Anthony Gaspipe Cassio was the one given the assignment and he was the underboss or soon to be underboss of the Lucchese family at the time recently just passed away and he, is, uh, he was in prison and, and he, he died of all kinds of ailments but they did, they placed a bomb underneath Frankie DeCiso's car he was at uh, Colombo, uh, excuse me, at a Gambino uh, Capo's social club. And when Frank came out with a guy with silver hair, they assumed the trigger guy that that was Gotti, blew it up. But it wasn't. It was a soldier in the Lucchese family that went out with, to Frank's car to get a business, business card. And Frankie DeCiso was dead as well. The change in the administration would still, of course, be John Gotti, and right under him now uh, would be Sammy Gravano. Uh, Sammy would come in on a couple of notches under as consulary as Joanne Gallo. Uh, things were blowing up. He had enough, so he was ready to retire. They brought Sammy up and... Frank Locasio would come in as underboss, but then John would switch that around the other way later on. 
So, Sammy now is getting ready, taking hold of the administration, and working for his new boss, John Gotti. Not really happy with what he's seeing, but he said it's a lot better than what we had. But now, his mentors are all gone. Shortly, shortly after the arrest would come, Gotti, Frank DeLacazzo, and Sammy would get arrested at the Raven 8 Social Club in Little Italy as FBI agents came in to arrest them. As they came into the Social Club, 20, 30 made members were in there. And the FBI agents said, all right, all you guys, just take it easy. We're just going to ID you and you can go ahead and leave. We're here to take into custody of John, Frank, and Sammy only. Everybody was cordial. There was no screaming or yelling. But Gotti said, well, we're having coffee before we leave. And uh, snapped his fingers and said, Get three espressos on the way out. And the FBI agents just stood there and waited. What the hell were they going to do? And uh, they drank the espresso and they went to booking. Uh, when they got to booking, uh, they all had a lot of money in their pocket except Sammy, as he recently revealed in his new assignment in life. We'll say that as we get to that in a minute. He only had $50. So John Gotti, being funny in booking, says, hey, Sammy, that's all you got is $50 in your pocket? He goes, yeah, that's all I got. He goes, remind me, when we get out of jail, I got to give you uh, more money. I got to give you an increase. And everybody thought that was funny. At the end, that time that they were booked, they weren't going anywhere. Bond would be revoked. They'd stay in prison or in jail preparing for their cases. John Gotti would prepare to blame everything on Sammy. Sammy prepared to make his move. But remember, there was not many people he can consult with while in prison now. But he did know Closer and closer to life. And he said, This treachery has to be met with treachery. They're trying to take me down, I'm going to take him down. And he cooperated. Known as a rat, known as a fink, known as all these things that people have called him. We never really heard Sammy's side of the story. But he had done one interview maybe 20 years ago. Nobody really understood it. Everybody was too busy saying, he's a rat, he's a rat, turn that TV off. But all this time later, Sammy now is a YouTube podcast superstar. People are joining his social network of YouTube and his podcast by the thousands to listen to a real gangster. Recently, some other guys that were just associates in another area of the country of under the Italian Mafia, or Costa Nostra, uh, went out and started saying that Sammy and Michael Francis, they're snitches and they're this and they're that. And I've said it before on this podcast, you got to be deaf, dumb, and stupid People that had the position rose to the position and were Costa Nostra. For you to be bad mouthing, and you were not you were nothing in the life but a gopher, there has to be a mental block in your brain. <laughs> so they've been kind of bad mouthing Sammy for being a rat. But I think that Sammy has started to win the hearts and minds of a lot of people on why he did what he did. You see, there's no secret. John Gotti was hated by many a gangster because of his bravado, because he was out in Front Street letting everybody know, I am Costro Nostra. He ordered all his capos and made members to come into the Ravenite Social Club 
and make an appearance once a week while the FBI clicked away and had tremendous joy identifying all these people. Because of John's blunder, he almost brought down an entire family. And there's no secret because when John died, nobody went to his funeral except his own immediate family. Sign from Costa Nostra. We didn't like you. So what did Sammy really do? I think he's won and he's winning the hearts and minds of many. The new Costa Nostra, where they don't kill you no more. They shelf you. They put you on the shelf. And then when you get on the shelf, you just start your own podcast and that's it. Sell autographed books. Become rich, famous, or some people won't become rich and famous because they don't have the talent to do it. Sammy does. He can tell a story. And so is in the case of Michael Francis. We're going to put a show link on, on here uh, to both of them because we believe that their shows are well worth the effort if you are into this type of material. Up next, episode 174 from the Buccaneer series, Scuttlebutt. We need to start erasing some rumors as we continue to forge the greatest pirate ship ever to set sail to rid the swamp of its creatures. Tactical Thursday, CZ-10, P-10, subcompact. It's an option you should keep an eye on. on. As always, continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we don't have anything. Continue to pray for your family, for your community, for the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most importantly, folks, Continue to pray for our great country, the United States of America. Merry Christmas and may the Lord bless you immensely. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.